Welcome back to the Love You Podcast. My name is Evan Marquez, dating coach for smart, strong, successful women and your personal trainer for love. Um, I want to shed light on why being yourself is useless advice and why dating is a skill that you could actually get better at. First, I want you to consider, have you ever met a guy who is good at dating? Right? Now, when someone's really good at something, they don't, they don't advertise it. It's not going to come in, I'm really good at dating. What you're going to notice is that he doesn't make all the mistakes that other guys make. It's going to be really the absence of problems. Right? He's going to um, call you and plan in advance instead of texting you on Friday and saying, "Hey, what are you doing now?" Right? He's going to, um, you know, uh, be chivalrous. He's going to uh, let you order whatever you want on the menu. Choose an atmosphere and place that's near your home. He's going to ask you questions about yourself and listen to your answers. He's not going to dominate the conversation or talk about how much his exes suck or Match.com or Tinder sucks or um, how much his job sucks. He's going to um, be sunny and open and warm and he's going to pick up the check at the end of the night and he's going to walk you to your car. And, but how many guys actually do that? And so there's some people who instinctively just get it right. But for the most of us, it's a learned skill. You, it's, you get positive feedback and you do more of it. The problem is we don't always get that kind of positive feedback. Right? By, by example, I bet, you, I bet that you haven't spent too much time thinking about how you can be a great date. You spend a lot of time thinking about how men are not great dates, the many, many ways in which they disappoint you. But unless you've taken any time to think about how you can be a better date, you are part of the same thing that these men are part of. Right? You're going out there and you have no strategy, no plan, no self-awareness. You go up, you sort of hope that there's attraction. And smart dating is more than that. It's not just showing up and looking cute. There's, there's actually a skill involved. So when a guy is good at dating, he didn't come out of the womb knowing it. He didn't get lessons at the hand of his father for the most part. He practiced. And that's where uh, pickup artists come in. Now, I don't know if you're familiar with pickup artists. I know uh, a decent portion of my audience is uh, is over the age that <laughs> most pickup artists are. It's pretty sad if you're a pickup artist in your 40s. Um, but pickup artists are guys who, for the most part, have, have limited social skills, very little confidence or experience with women, who read up on the internet and sort of use themselves as, as social guinea pigs, right? They, they put themselves out there and they get rejected and they get rejected and they try different techniques and they try different lines and they share war stories and they've built up systems on that guys without any social confidence, guys who don't have the ability to speak to other women <laughs> without a script, will then take these, these, these skills out for, for a, a, a ride and see how they work. And sure enough, if enough dorky guys um, got enough practice, they end up with, maybe it starts with a false sense of confidence, but it turns into real confidence because they are following effective tools on how to get women to like you. And again, it just comes from repetition and practice. What works, what doesn't, right? The scientific method, right? Without having any bias. Is this helping me get what I want? Now, unfortunately for pickup artists, it's usually they just want, they haven't got the long-term picture. They don't know how to be men and get married, but they're very effective at getting laid, right? And for their purposes, their techniques work well, and it comes from practice and experience. And so, um, there's not, there's, there aren't many examples on the women's side of women doing the same sort of thing. The closest thing I could think of, uh, of comparing, and, it, and it's not even a, a fair comparison, is uh, Rachel Greenwald, um, his friend who wrote a book uh, years ago called Have Him at Hello. The original title was Why He Didn't Call You Back. And she interviewed a thousand guys. Now, again, she's, she's very bright and talented, writer, uh, dating coach, matchmaker. Um, most of what's in her book is stuff I could tell you because I am a guy. <laughs> I didn't need to interview a thousand guys to arrive at it, but it's great to have that kind of validation. So Rachel interviews a thousand guys. Why didn't you call women back? And she wrote an interesting book about it. And it's stuff that's, she said, 85% of the time, there is a reason that goes beyond, oh, I just didn't feel the chemistry. And that's the easiest, strangely, the easiest stuff for, easiest stuff for us to take is, ah, I didn't feel the chemistry. And that's what 
you pass up on guys, the guys pass up on you, and it, it really avoids the real issue. 85% of the time, there's an actual reason, something that happened on the date that explains why he didn't call you. And the way Rachel puts it, and I'm not gonna paraphrase her whole book, too busy, too opinionated, too selfish, too talkative, too difficult, too reserved. Now again, that's not supposed to paralyze you. Oh my God, I can't be too this and I can't be too that. And no one's trying to make you into like a shell of a person who's afraid of expressing herself, right? But the same way that I have to look at these videos and see how I come across and, and uh, know, what, know what my flaws are. Um, it would be hard to watch a videotape of yourself on a, on a date. Like, it would be painful for, for us to do that, but that's essentially what, what happens when you're sitting across from someone, they're looking at you for the first time through a fresh set of eyes. So things that come naturally to you might be a little weird to them. And vice versa, when a guy comes out and he's just being himself, <laughs> right? and he doesn't realize that it's almost like, almost like a job interview, you kind of have to put on the, the best self that's gonna get the job. And in dating, you just don't get that kind of feedback. You go on a date with a guy and he acts in one way or another, he calls you, texts you, wants to see you again, you just don't respond to him. So how does he learn from that experience? He doesn't. And he does it again and again and again with different women and he has no idea why it's not working. Right? But you know why you didn't see him. And it wasn't just chemistry, it was something that he did. And so Rachel Greenwald in her book talks about something called the exit interview. Again, it's just like a job, you've been let go from your job and they sit you down, they explain to you why you've been let go. Um, we never do this in dating, right? If, if, if you ever get feedback, it's inadvertent. <laughs> it's, it's out of anger, right? The, the things that I learned from going out with hundreds of people were generally women who, <laughs> who had no filters, who, who hated me, who told me negative things that often had a basis in truth. Um, and that's, you know, I, it was always hard to hear, but you know, eventually it sinks in. Most of us don't get that kind of feedback. So if you rented a car and the people at the front desk at the car service um, at Avis or something were, were, were rude and negative, it's in your best interest to fill out a comment card or go to the website and let those people know, otherwise they're gonna keep on being negative. So Rachel encourages you and I would encourage you in specific situations to do the exit interview. And what is an exit interview? It's nothing more than asking for feedback after the fact. Now, you don't do this with every guy. You gotta be judicious about it. But if you had a date where you felt a good connection, right? yeah, it was a fun date. And I'm shocked I didn't hear from that guy. Well, you don't wanna do it the next day. You give him time. But if a week passes and you don't hear from the guy, pretty sure he's not gonna call. At which point, you fire him off an email. Hey, Brad, I had fun meeting you last week. Uh, I thought we had a connection didn't hear from you, no big deal, I'm a big girl, I can take it, but I'd love to hear why. Specifically, don't just tell me there wasn't any chemistry. Was there anything that I did on the date that put you off in any way that explains why I didn't hear from you? Right? And don't worry, you're not gonna hurt my feelings, I'm just looking to grow and get better and find, you know, find a, a, you know, the right kind of guy for me. It's a very earnest, sincere, you're not begging him back, you'll be surprised at how many people take the time to respond. And I think if a man wrote to you that way, I would hope you'd respond to him as well. And what you hear is usually one of two things. You will either hear in a certain percentage of times, actually, it had nothing to do with you. Actually, when I was out with you, I realized I'm still kind of hung up on my ex-girlfriend. It's not your fault. You seem really, really great. Or I got really slammed at work and I apologize for being so flaky. Please give me another chance. I'd like to see you again. So some portion of the time, it's actually not, you actually did have a good connection and stuff happened that went unexplained, right? And that's really validating, that's really nice. Oh, it wasn't me. I did, what I felt on that date was right. And then a certain percentage of the time, you're gonna get feedback on how you came across to someone else. I, I, I remember one of my clients who did this at my behest learned that the main reason that the guy didn't come back from war was because she didn't, <laughs> she didn't give him any feedback. She kind of sat there, like evaluating him, like like this, like like a like a, a business person. But she wasn't engaged, so he basically didn't ask her out because he didn't think she liked him. Right? She didn't give him enough signs that he was doing well. Right? That is a big takeaway. 
to learn to be more engaged and give your date more positive feedback. Touch him on the hand, look him in the eye, ask him questions, laugh at his jokes. Let him know that he, he can kiss you if he wants. Right? That, that's the value of an exit interview. You could really learn what guys think about because there's only so much I could tell you from, from where I sit without being there on the date with you. There's only so much I could tell you. The best person to tell you what's not working is the guy that you're with. So it doesn't mean all constructive feedback is, is equal. Right? There's anomalies, there's, there's crazy people, <laughs> there's people with bad days. It, you don't have to take all of the advice to heart. What I realized after getting feedback from so many dates, uh, usually against my will because I never asked for an exit interview, was that most of the criticism leveled against me was real. Um, and I could ignore it at my own peril and just say, well, I'm just going to be myself. I'm just going to keep on doing what I'm going to do. I'm going to keep on talking about myself all the time. And I'm going to keep planning dates where women have to drive over to my side of town. And I'm going to keep asking them to split the check. And I'm going to keep on participating in behaviors that are completely ineffective and then complain that it's not working. Obviously, that's not what I chose to do. I chose to learn. Um, and I would really encourage you to do the same. Uh, as I've already suggested, not all criticism is cr created equal. You have to consider the source uh, and you have to ask yourself whether it resonates with you. But once you understand what your strengths and weaknesses are, you could kind of work around your weaknesses and, and try to address them and be a better date that's more likely to get guys to want to come back for more. So where does this leave you? Um, well, uh, I'm going to keep on giving you free information and advice from my podcast here on YouTube, I'm gonna do it in my newsletter, I'm gonna do it on my blog, um, but the best stuff I have is in my programs. My book, Why He Disappeared, um, which is available on my website, uh, is going to explain to you exactly why guys disappear from a first date, why they disappear during the courtship process, why they disappear from a relationship. So you can understand exactly how men have been reacting to you for all these years, once and for all. So check that out. Uh, I enjoyed this. I hope you did as well. Uh, my name is Evan Mark Katz. The next time we're going to talk about how to make an in insecure boyfriend feel more secure on the next Love You podcast. So I'm really excited to give that to you. In the meantime, if you enjoyed this, please click like, click sub subscribe, follow me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, and most importantly, go to evanmarkkatz.com, go to free advice, give me your email address, and I will send you free dating and relationship advice until you drop it. Talk to you next week. Thanks for your time.